Hello and good morning. good morning. Happy fifth day of Christmas. Did anybody get five golden rings today? Okay. I'm intern pastor Grace Pardon Allworth, and our co pastors are gone right now. Pastor Arthur is leading the mission trip in Liberia, and Pastor Ed is touring with his cover band, Grateful Ed. That's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Norma. All right, uh, so it's a quiet week in the office this week. Uh, the office is gonna be open on Tuesday, so if you have any need to call, there should be somebody there. Otherwise, it should be kind of intermittent this week, and then we'll resume normal activities the following week. You may notice all of these beautiful poinsettias, and there's some outside too. Um, if you bought one, please pick them up. There's bags out there that you can put them in there. Are there any other announcements that I'm missing for the good of the community? Should we just begin worship together? Let's do it, okay. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, love from the beginning, word made flesh, breath of heaven, amen. Please rise and body your spirit. Let us confess our sin before God and one another, trusting in God's endless mercy and love. Merciful God, we confess that we are not perfect. We have said and done things we regret. We have tried to earn your redeeming grace while denying it to others. We have resisted your call to be your voice in the world. Forgive us, loving God. Give us your righteousness, the strength to put aside our failures, and the courage to try again. Amen. Dear people of God, hear the good news. Christ the Savior is born. You are loved and forgiven. In the name of Jesus who has come among us, you are freed from proving that you deserve to be loved. Because God's love is given to you as the most precious gift of all. Rejoice in this love and share it with the world. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord God, you know that we cannot place our trust in our own powers. As you protected the infant Jesus, so defend us and all the needy from harm and adversity. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Today's reading is from Psalm 148. We read responsibly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps. Mountains in all, high, in all hills, fruit trees in all cedars. Sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. Word of God, Word of Life. Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. Now, after the wise men had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt, I have called my son. When Herod heard that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated. And he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem, who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who are seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. 
But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace be to you from God, our heavenly parent, God who is always with us, and God who inspires us to follow him. Amen. All through Advent, we were promised that even though the world is falling apart, that the pain is unbearable, hope is lost, the violence doesn't cease, that when God enters the world through this tiny, adorable, helpless little baby on Christmas Eve, that all will be made right again. We heard promises of hope and peace. We heard that tears would be wiped from our eyes. We heard that in this darkness, the light will begin to shine again. We heard some really nice promises as we prepared for Christmas. Even more, our expectations around that Christmas tree were like this too. We see the twinkling lights, we see the beautifully wrapped presents, we recall loving memories when we look at special ornaments hanging there. We opened the presents, we teared up when the gifts were surprisingly thoughtful, cleaned up the wrapping paper, and then, well then, after all the presents are opened and put away, and the hope and the expectations are realized, met or unmet, when the guests go home and the house is silent again, we realize there it was. That was it. That was Christmas. And here we are. What's next? So let's open up our text for today. And here we are. Jesus and the Holy Family are running for their lives. Jesus and his parents are refugees, victims of an oppressive and ruthless regime. It wasn't that pain and fear and anxiety stopped when Jesus was born. It was just, in fact, beginning. Today's story begins after the Magi had just met with the Holy Family. They followed a star which led them to the family. They brought gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold because he's the king, frankincense to anoint him as the Messiah, and myrrh to foretell, which is a burial herb to foretell the future of this king. The astrologers then left, having been warned, warned in a dream that they needed to keep this boy's location a secret. So they went home, but avoided Herod. And after the Magi left, Joseph was warned in a dream that they needed to flee to Egypt. The angel said, Herod's on the hunt for this child and wants to kill him. So Joseph obeyed. He got up. He took the child and his mother under the cover of darkness, and they were out of town, well on their way by daylight. And so they lived in Egypt for a time. Now Herod was livid that the Magi evaded him. So he decided instead of just killing Jesus, he'd kill all the little boys two years old or younger born in that region. He knew that this child was a threat to his kingdom that he built and stabilized over the years. So he better kill anyone who might be a threat to this. This is Herod the Great. It doesn't sound that great, but he's Herod the Great. He ruled from 37 BCE to 4 BCE. He's known for some fairly impressive architectural projects during his reign. He stabilized the economy and had some strategic political allies. He also, however, killed anyone who was in his way or would be considered a threat to his dynasty. He was known to be an oppressive ruler who would prohibit any protests or differing opinions from his own. And as he grew older, his depression and paranoia increased, and he died an awful and painful death after a particularly terrible illness. So then Joseph received word that Herod died. The angel said it would be safe to return home now, but en route, Joseph received word that another violent and oppressive ruler is in charge. So he fled to the tiny town of Nazareth, barely a blip on the map. And they stayed there for the rest of Jesus' childhood. 
I cannot imagine the pressure Mary and Joseph must have felt trying to protect their kid. It's hard enough to be a parent, keeping your kid alive and launching them as healthy, well-adjusted citizens. But their, their kid wasn't even just a regular human kid. Their kid is the savior of the world. And there is a price on his head. Why was Jesus so threatening to Herod? Jesus undermines the very thing that Herod stands for. Herod has a very specific understanding of success and power, and the very presence of Jesus undermines this. Herod knows there's a king greater than he is on the scene, and there's nothing he can do about it. Herod knows that this king, who is the actual son of God, won't mind committing treason. Herod knows that this gospel that this son of God will be preaching is threatening to him and everything he worked for. He knows that his power is simply a house of cards built on the promise of restoring the kingdom to the way things have always been. Herod knows that this new king isn't going to be impressed by wealth or power or prestige. And even more, Herod knows that this new king's message, the gospel message, will touch the hearts of all who will hear it. Herod knows he can't compete with the gospel, so he's terrified. And Herod knows that this message of the new king is to feed the hungry with good food, give clean water to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, take care of the sick, and visit the incarcerated. Herod knows that this king will bring the good news for the poor and that the world will be forever changed by the gospel. And maybe Herod knows that in 2,000 years, his name will be forgotten by most people in the world. But everyone will know who Jesus is. Jesus' simple, radical acts of love and compassion are threatening to people like Herod. Compassion is threatening to the way things have always been. Because compassion is life-changing. I have a young friend named Izzy. She's nine years old now. And on Thanksgiving, you might have caught her story on Care 11 with Jana Shortle. When Izzy was six years old, she saw a person experiencing homelessness. She was holding, he was holding a cardboard sign that he had made on the side of the road. And Izzy asked her mother, what, what does that guy's sign say? And Izzy's mother read it to her, homeless, anything helps, God bless. And Izzy asked her mother, homeless? You mean he has nowhere to live? Correct. Well, can we give him something, anything? So they rolled down their car window and handed the man a dollar. The light changed, they drove off, and the car was silent. Izzy's mother looked at her daughter through the rearview mirror and noticed that she was crying quietly in the back. Honey, what's wrong? I just wish there was something we could do to make his life better. So, six-year-old Izzy began thinking, and she dreamed up a project. They would make gift bags with supplies, bus passes, and food for people they saw asking for help. And she made about 10 that year, and she was pretty excited. She handed them out, and she knew it didn't solve homelessness, but it did brighten up those 10 people's days. The next year, when she was seven, Izzy made a few more. Again, the next year, when she was eight, Izzy made a few more. This year, when Izzy was nine, her mom put a shout out on Facebook for supplies, and people were inspired and began responding. And a few days later, Izzy posted this video saying, Hi, my name is Izzy. For a while I've seen homeless people on the streets and it makes me so sad. I decided I'm sick of this, so I've started to make homeless kits. We add warm things like socks and water bottles, money for the bus, toothbrushes, stuff to help them to get somewhere safe. And I want to say thank you to all the people who have started to give me supplies. Thank you. It's been so nice over the past two weeks. So nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Friday after Thanksgiving, which I like to call Friendsgiving, we will make the homeless kits. Anyone can come help. More hands, the better. And thank you again. 
I hope you know we are trying to change the world. I hope you know we are trying to change the world. And the video picked up so much attention and the family became overwhelmed by people's generosity. It became apparent that Izzy's homeless kits packing event would not fit in their house any longer. So my husband and I opened up our ceramic studio to them and we began collecting supplies. And Carol Levin picked up the story. On the day of the event, the studio was packed to the brim with excited people, filling bags, hugging Izzy, inspired by their compa her compassion and generosity. And Izzy was able to organize 52 people to make 100 gift bags filled with socks and hygiene products, snacks, hand warmers, lotion, toothpaste, bus passes, and more. I hope you know we're trying to change the world. And Izzy knows, yes, policy changes, affordable housing, substance abuse counseling, trauma therapy, corporate generosity, and a thriving economy will all help to end the housing crisis. But what Izzy believes and what is so threatening to somebody like Herod is that compassion will change the world. And she's getting requests to organize this event again and soon. And we're in talks about how to make this more official and to give her storage space at the studio, maybe a cute little office. And Izzy started something powerful, and it came from a place of compassion. The darkness is still all around us, and we still feel hopeless and overwhelmed. But that little baby did escape Herod in Archelaus and grew up to be a man, the Messiah, who preached the good news to the poor, bound up the broken hearts, healed the sick, fed the 5,000 hungry people, and shook the powers that be to their very core. And try as they might, they could not silence the gospel. And through Jesus' compassion, which ultimately even killed him, the world was changed. So even if the darkness is all around us, and even if the world is despairing, we have a hope and a gospel that pierces the desolation. Our hope is that this compassion will change the world. The compassion that brought God to us did in fact change the world. Not power, not violence, not opulence, not wealth. A vulnerable baby born to impoverished people grew up to become the king that cares for the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and the incarcerated, and the homeless. This child, the Prince of Peace, changed the world because love always wins, and his love changes us too. Amen.
please rise and body your spirit as we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered with all who seek the Christ child, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Compassionate God, we pray for all who are victims and survivors of violence, especially because of the religious faith. Be with the Jewish community in New York as they mourn the loss of their safety when a man interrupted their Hanukkah celebration, stabbing five people. We pray for refugees seeking safety as they attempt to escape violence, war, poverty, and persecution. Just as you were with the Holy Family, be with these families. We pray for those who lost their temporary housing in the Drake Hotel fire on Christmas Day. We praise you for the generosity of all who donated time, gifts, and funds to help these people have a brighter future. Lord, in your mercy. God of wisdom, we pray for our church. Give us wisdom as we move into the new year. Help us to seek your vision for this community. Help us to work together to seek your will and not in opposition to one another. Help us discern the path that you are creating for us. Thank you for calling us together into this community to grow in faith and seek to serve you and our neighbors together. Lord, in your mercy. Healing and comforting God. So many people in our community are sick, struggling with mental health concerns, grieving, battling addiction, and seeking hope. We lift up Dave Merrill, the Dunwoody family, Bob Lundeen, Keith Sen, Jane Kenyon, Joel Wigstadt, Jeff Hodling, Jean Nyberg, Ray Jones, Ellie Hansen, and Ray Hill. We also take a moment now to name aloud anyone who is on our hearts today. Be with all who grieve the loss of loved ones this season. Remind us of the promise that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, and that you are a God of resurrection, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy. Into your gracious hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting your steadfast mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now give with joy. You may be seated.
You may rise in body and or spirit as we set this table of grace. On the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. This is the table not of the church, but of God. It's been made ready for those who love God and who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith, come, those who have little, come, those of you who are here often, Come, those who are here very rarely. Come, those who have tried to follow God. And come, those who have failed. Come because Jesus has invited you and will meet you here. We are all invited by Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Are you ready? Amen. All are invited here at this table. We have juice in the light-colored cups, and we have wine in the dark-colored cups. We have regular bread and we have gluten-free wafers, so just indicate what you would like. We believe that this table is open to every single person who is here. God doesn't check your credentials and neither do we. So if you don't wanna receive communion today but you wanna receive a blessing instead, you can just cross your arms over your chest and that will let us know. The table of life is spread before you. Come and feast on the goodness and mercy of God. Amen. You may be seated and the ushers will guide you forward. Here you go. And then just follow me with the wine. Thank you. It's the body of Christ given for you.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you now and keep you forever in God's grace. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us, you grace us with life and breath and give us bread for the journey. Send us out in service to this world that you love, telling the amazing news of your coming to be Savior and Lord of all. Amen. Before I send you out on your way, if you have any silent auction items, you gotta pick them up today, and don't forget your poinsettias. Gotta clean this place up, thank you. <laughs> now receive this benediction. Grace from God's own heart, peace from the child in the manger, and strength from the spirit of life be blessings for you today and forevermore. Amen.